can't live without my daughter. She is my everything. I always realise how lucky I am to be a mum to my children and to be there for them. Right from birth, a child needs a mother to cuddle, psychological care, physical care. The mother has to be there. Postpartum hemorrhage happens everywhere. It happens in high income countries and low and middle income countries. But most of the death is in poor countries. The United Nations have identified 20 countries to contribute to 77% of maternal deaths. The main countries are India, Bangladesh, Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Pakistan. Postpartum hemorrhage causes more deaths than anything else in, uh, as far as maternal mortality is concerned in Pakistan. Our biggest nightmare is getting blood because if she's losing blood like mad, she has to be replaced with that amount of blood. And if you do not have the blood at hand, then that is the major problem. Women dying of postpartum hemorrhage, women brought in debt to the hospital. There are so many of them. You can't even think of that in a developed world. But over here, this is an everyday thing which goes on and on and on. When I was going through postpartum hemorrhage, I had the feeling I'm going towards death. When I went to the hospital on that morning, I did not know. I was very worried whether I will be back to the to home or not. I just prayed to God, oh God, please save my life just for my daughter. I was bleeding heavily and immediately they shifted me back to the operation theater and uh, did my hysterectomy to save my life. I used to get emotional when I saw the such a woman arriving in the hospital with PPH, but obviously after my experience, the feelings were enhanced. I had literally tears in my eyes with the woman going into PPH. PPH in Nigeria is a big concern. We have at least a quarter of our women dying from postpartum bleeding. Medical personnel face a lot of difficulties and obstacles when contending with PPH in Nigeria. Starting from simple things like delays in making a decision to go to a hospital. What makes it delay? Your phobia for the hospital or the fact that you don't have enough money or that the hospital is far away. The woman already has insufficient blood levels, and then she's uh, unable to tolerate much blood loss. If upon this foundation there is delay in providing care, of course, the woman will succumb easily. And this is why postpartum hemorrhage for us continues to be a major public health problem. I lost my wife in 2013. She started bleeding and the bleeding could not stop. We tried to take her to another hospital where they could really help us, but I think we did not get there on time. There was nothing I could do. I just started praying. That's what I started doing because I knew there was no help coming immediately because it was so early in the morning. To have a child without a mother is an experience that I will not pray for anyone to experience. In so many ways it has affected me. 
The only time you get over one patient that, that you lose to PPH is when you get another PPH patient that you are able to save. That's like a consolation. As a mother of three in Nigeria, I know it's going to be pretty difficult for a child to go without a mother. Most women in the UK who are pregnant or about to give birth might never have heard of postpartum hemorrhage. Yet, of all the women giving birth, about 2% will actually develop postpartum hemorrhage. I just remember wanting to hold on and wanting to see my children and, and meet my babies properly and not wanting to die, basically. I had heard that women used to die in childbirth in the Victorian age and it used to be a big thing in England. Postpartum hemorrhage and, and severe blood loss was something that happened once in a while and usually in countries where there weren't decent medical facilities. The mood really did change as I started to lose more and more blood. I could see there was just red all over the sheets and everybody started to get a bit panicky. It was a very significant blood loss. I remember the staff saying that they hadn't had a blood loss of that um, gravity for a long time. I can just remember feeling like it could all go extremely wrong and, and it was something that I hadn't anticipated. I started to become aware that there was a real possibility that I would have to have a hysterectomy. That was a very scary moment. The idea of losing my womb on the same day as giving birth to my children is just, it's so huge, it's unimaginable. These women's lives could be saved, those children's mothers could be saved. Something needs to change. The woman trial is a large scale international randomized controlled trial to evaluate the effect of a drug called tranexamic acid on the risk of death after postpartum hemorrhage. The drug is cheap, is easily available and can be administered by a nurse or a midwife or a junior doctor. It is found to be very useful in trauma, about 10-15% less deaths in trauma if you use that, but its role in pregnancy, delivery, PPH, etc. is not known up till now. To set up a huge trial is a scary thing. We needed to have 20,000 women. We needed to find hundreds and hundreds of doctors to take part in this trial. And we needed many, many countries to take part, especially those countries where women were dying and where postpartum hemorrhage was a real problem. Any initiative that is directed at this major public health problem, of course, uh, we welcome readily, wholeheartedly. If a drug can prevent hysterectomies, a drug can prevent deaths, a drug can minimize the amount of blood we need to give, then that's a good thing all over the world. It was very easy to convince the doctors in Nigeria to take part because they see postpartum hemorrhage and women dying daily. Many African countries came on board and we then focused on Southeast Asia and Pakistan was the next big country to come on board. I am very passionate about the trial. I really want the results of the trial as quickly as possible. This will make a difference. This will tell us whether it is effective or it's not. And obviously if it is shown to be effective, I'm sure the World Health Organization is going to put it on the essential drug list. trial was a huge success. The most important result from the woman trial is that you can use tranexamic acid to reduce the risk of a woman dying and you can reduce that risk by about 30%. The key thing is to get the treatment to that woman really early. We have hit upon a treatment 
that will save thousands of lives of women in Nigeria and also globally. Even if one single death can be prevented by any intervention, that is good enough. In research, you've got a choice. You can either be a big part of something trivial or a small part of something really worthwhile. And we opted to bring people together to do, to do something that none of them could have done on their own. Preventing the postpartum hemorrhage means preventing the death of the woman means saving the life of a whole family. It will be important to our patients too because their care will cost them less money, less stress, less adverse outcomes. One of our concerns when we started this trial was whether there would be side effects from giving tranexamic acid. The fantastic news is we didn't see any increases at all in any of the clotting side effects. We've shown it to be effective, that it can save lives, and I hope every single doctor who sees a woman with postpartum hemorrhage makes sure he or she considers using tranexamic acid in that woman they're seeing.